Hi, everybody. Sorry, laying down, a little dizzy. But I um, still wanted to uh, connect with y'all and um, tell you something neat that the Lord gave me this morning. And um, in Psalm 63, verse 3, we read, Because your loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise you. Thus, verse 4, Thus I will bless you while I live. I will lift up my hands in your name. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise you with joyful lips. So first of all, it says, because your loving kindness is better than life, I will praise you. I remember when I was going through radiation, I was very, very sick. I was on a feeding tube. I, I just couldn't even, just to walk from the bed to the recliner, I was malnourished, I was dehydrated, had mouth sores. And I remember uh, telling the Lord, man, that verse, your loving kindness is better than life. I believe it. But right now, I want my life back. <laughs> and I go, but you said your loving kindness is better than even feeling good or having life, even if you have a terminal illness. His loving kindness is better than good health. Better than life. And I said, well, I, I, I haven't really caught up to that truth. But just because we have a hard time with the truth doesn't negate the truth, okay? I think many of us are surprised that plants are, um, you know, emitting oxygen for us to take in. And we're emitting carbon dioxide and they're taking in. That truth's a little weird, but it's true. And it's scientifically proven. But it's a big mystery to most of us that all this chemical change is going on around us. So just because we read something in the scriptures, we go, I don't feel that, doesn't change the fact that it's truth. And so sometimes we have to say, Lord, I believe, help me with my unbelief. And at least I know where I'm going in my perspective. And I can't stay here. I love that. Sometimes when I read the word and I go, man, I'm not there yet. It never discourages me. It's almost like knowing there's something up ahead that's better than what I'm experiencing at the moment and that the Holy Spirit is leading me there. So I experience life as, as my creator designed it to be experienced. But the other part that hit me about this, it says in verse four of Psalm 63, I will bless you while I live. I will lift up my hands in your name. And then it later says, my mouth shall praise you. Well, I realize it says, bless him while we live, it, it means whatever life we have right now, let's offer it to him and bless him in the midst of it. You know, if you're going through a divorce, depression, anxiety, if you're like, whoa, bunch of money doing well, if you're at a stage where, you know, you've gotten your emotions kind of under the control of the spirit, if your kids are doing well, if your kids are not doing well, bless him while you live at any stage of that life. And I know it's hard because modern teaching equates, we bless God when things are going well, we complain to God when things are going poorly. But really we need to bless him at all times. His praise should continually be upon our lips. I know that um, this morning I was writing about um, just I've been having a lot of pain and a lot of side effects and I don't like it at all. I like to be up and around and active and and sometimes, you know, when you have physical problems, it just, the noise of that just competes with hearing his loving kindness or appreciating your little peaty dog or a sunset. It's like this other stuff that's going on, the impending idea that death awaits closely. That's pretty loud. I'm just telling you, it gets pretty loud. But I told the Lord, I thanked him, that the voice of the Lord is above many waters. And that it's not until I kind of rise above in, in connection that I get perspective. And sometimes it's not easy to get there. But we, we lift our eyes to heavens and we bless him while we live. If we're in the hospital, if we're going through chemo, if we're going through a devastating divorce, it never changes what God deserves. And when we give God what he deserves, 
we end up getting what we need. So bless the Lord while you live. Bless him on the way to the to the court system. Bless him when they're sticking another needle or doing another test. Bless him while you're bailing your child out of jail. Bless him, bless him, bless him. You know what's really neat about that? Because we don't, when there's not a lot of blessings in our lives, we get to start being involved in blessings because we're blessing the Lord. So I just want to encourage you to bless the Lord while you live. Cry, offer it up. Say, Lord, I hate what I'm going through, but I still love you. This is so ugly, but you're so beautiful. Pour out your heart before him and contrast the beauty of the Lord with what you're going through. And it'll kind of, it may not change what we're going through, but we just like when you go up to Big Bear or Lake Arrowhead or you drive up out of the smog, smog didn't change, but you rose up above it. Just like a plane flies up through the clouds, storm clouds, and then you end up with blue sky and sun, still it's raining. But you position yourself in a place where you can see some sunshine, get clear air. So bless the Lord while you live. Lord, help us to do this because life can be just really hard. And I thank you, Lord, that you know our frames and that we are but dust. You know that what is man but a vapor here today and gone tomorrow. But Lord, you are the ancient of days. You are our rock. Who is our rock except our God? Lord, I just thank you that you are so good, even in the midst of times that are really bad. And I pray, Lord, that we would use the remedies you give us in your word, and we would bless you with the life we have. We'd seek to honor you and run the race that's set before us. Not bless you with the life we wish we had, but bless you with the life we are currently living. Help us to do this by the power of your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen.